Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. So, give me the video on our beloved brother, Reverend T.D. Jakes. He mad. He mad. Our brother's mad. A few months ago, he had a, a secret seminar, How to Stop the Israelites. It didn't go too well. When I, see, I, the name of the class is just one move from God, and the whole world is mad. Just one move. Most I said, check, nigga. <laughs> so you can stand. Give me that in Isaiah 8 and 9, I think it is, about associate yourselves. You know what I'm talking about? Isaiah 8. It might be verse 11. I ain't looking at it. Let me find it. Associate, associate yourselves. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody help me. Isaiah 8 and 9. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 9. Associate yourselves, O ye people. You want to associate with the white man's paganism? You want to associate yourselves with the white man's white supremacy called Christianity? Go, you brothers online and sisters, go ahead and associate yourselves with that. We had two knuckleheads that ran from us and ran to the Christian apologetics. Now, can somebody show me Christian apologetics in the Bible? Can you show me apologetics in the Bible? It's not there. But they rejected Israel in the Bible, and ran to apologetics. So read it again. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 9. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces. You shall what? Be broken in pieces. Uh-huh. And give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. The Lord ain't playing with you rejects out there. You brothers and sisters that reject his word and associate yourselves with your oppressor, the men and women that destroyed our race, he said, you're going to be broken in pieces. Go ahead. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. I love that verse right there. Now, let's look at our beloved brother. Now, we always talk about these ministers, and we don't talk about them in a the spirit of hatred because the prayer is that they repent. That is the prayer. Repent and help us in this great work that no one man can do alone. That is the prayer. Now, let's watch our beloved brother, T.D. J. Jesus. I feel like I'm doing what I was born to do. I, I want to make sure that a foundation, a solid biblical foundation exists in the church from generation to generation. I am tired of these junk food babies starting churches off of potato chips. Stop! I'm tired of these junk food babies starting churches off potato chips. And these potato chips taste good, too. <laughs> Go back to the beginning again. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing what I was born to do. I, I want to make sure that a foundation, a solid biblical foundation, exists in the church from generation to generation. I am tired of these junk food babies starting churches off of potato chips. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. And drawing more people than you can feed. That's why Wait, stop. you're being... He said drawing more people than you can feed. He mad. He mad. See, of course, that's what, I can't feed the people. That's why we got brothers and sisters... To help us do this work, we all must work together as one body. Like it says in 1 Corinthians 12, and I think Romans 12 says the same thing. Work together as a body. So we ask our dear beloved brother T.D. Jakes to repent and come help us. That's all we need is a little helping hand from our friends. Go ahead. 
That's why you're being peeled off to all these other religions. Because you don't know who you are. That's why people come in and tell you Christianity is the white man's religion. Because you don't know who you are. Stop right there. I'm glad he said you don't know who you are. Can you give me that in Isaiah 1? See, the, God says the Israelites would not know who they are in the last days. The Bible says that. So our dear beloved T.D. Jakes, brother, he has not learned the truth of the Bible. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. You see that? That's crystal clear. An ox knows his owner, even an ass. But my people don't know. God is prophesying that in the last days we would not know who we are or to whom we belonged. Give me that the precept to that in the Jeremiah 17, 4. Give me that one. Let's verify what T.D. Jake said there. He said something right there. He didn't even realize what he said. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So the Israelites, including Jeremiah, would discontinue from the heritage God that gave us, which means what? The laws and the testimonies we would discontinue from. Go ahead. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. That prophecy. We're here in America in a land which I, we know not, serving our enemies. Was that it? For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. Now give me the precept to that one in Deuteronomy 32, 26. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. God said he would scatter the 12 tribes of Israelites to the four corners of the earth. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. They would not remember who they are. Give me that Psalms 83. Is it verse 4? I want to get to the point. Is it verse 4 or verse 5? One of those two. To show you the Israelites would forget who they are. Go ahead. Psalms 83, verse 4. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation. So the nations had a hand in this, cutting us off from being a nation. What nation? The nation of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That we would not remember that we're the Israelites. Now, go back a little bit, Officer Noah, and let's start that. Just go back like a few seconds when he started. That's why you're being peeled off to all these other religions. Because you don't know who you are. That's why people come in and tell you Christianity is the white man's religion. Because you don't know who you are. If you knew who you were, they couldn't pass that off on you. Wait, pause right there. Pause right there with the clap. They're applauding. He said they're coming telling you that Christianity is the white man's religion. Christianity, modern day Christianity, is... The white man's religion. Can you give me that? Give me that. Uh, Second Thessalonians setting himself up, showing his images and all that. Show me that. Just give me that. Give me that. Christ modern day Christianity is the white man's religion. Right, and that is white supremacy. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse four. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. So who's opposing everything written in the Bible? The white man. Who opposes everything and exalts himself against the Bible? The white man. Go ahead. Or that is worship. Or that is worship. Go ahead. So that he as God. Who set himself up as God? The white man. Go ahead. Sitteth in the temple of God. Who says their churches are the temples of God? Go ahead. Showing himself that he is God. Who goes throughout the earth showing himself that he is God? Right through those paintings and images. That's the white man. This is what the apostle Paul warned us about. Everybody see that? Give me the next, the Revelation 13 and um, 7 and 8. While he's getting that. While you're listening to this and hearing the scriptures, you got to ask yourself, well, what the hell is he talking about? Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The Israelites are the saints. And, and he that warred against us is the white man from the time of Renaissance. Go ahead. And to overcome them. And they overcame us. Go ahead. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And this man would rule the earth. Go ahead. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. So who's worshiping the him? Everybody's worshiping the white man as God in Jesus. What are we reading? Bible prophecy. Go ahead. Whose names are not written in the book of the 
whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. So from there, from there, from there. Let's go back to our dear beloved brother, T.D. Go ahead. Yeah, he's sweating. Stand up, Dr. Harrison. He's just as much Gentile as I am. By the flesh, neither one of us are the seed of Abraham. He's just a different flavor of the same mess. Wait, stop. Christian. You know why he said he's just a different flavor of the same mess? No. See, the white man's people was not enslaved and destroyed like your people were, Reverend Jakes. So it's two different, two different things there. See, he had to pull up the white man. I just love the white man. Go ahead. Christianity is not rooted in white men. Christianity is rooted in Judaism, and Judaism is rooted in Abraham, and Abraham was rooted in God. This is not about colors. This is not about colors. This, Stop. This is a so how come when you go to church, Jesus is white, God is white, the angels are... This brother, T.D. Jakes, has been on TBN, the Trinity Broadcast Network, and on the stained glass behind him will be white images. He never says, take these images down. No. It's not about color. He never said it until the truth. Now that we're standing up, now it's not about color. Bishop, that's what I'm looking at. This right here is showing you that the Most High's work is affecting their behind where they got to come out there and, come and do damage control. Just for master. one move from for, God. From master. That's what he's doing. <laughs> he's trying to please master. That's what he's doing. Go ahead. This is about covenant. It is about covenant. It is not about colors. Stop. It's about covenant. It's not about color. Give me Hebrews 8 and 8, please. Who was the covenant made to? Because I want to see a scripture that says the covenant was made with Esau, the white man, made with the Philistines, made with the Moabites. I want to see that scripture. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That's Jew and Gentile right there. Jew and Gentile, when he wrote to the Hebrews, he made it plain. He said, I'm talking to the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel because we were split into two. Now go to Jeremiah 31, 30. Let's see where Paul got that from. 31 about, it says the same thing. Right. He referenced Abraham, right. But everybody didn't come out of Abraham. 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So that's where Paul got it from, saying the same thing. It's, it's not a covenant with all races on planet Earth. That's a lie. That's a white supremacist lie of multiculturalism, also called democracy. It's the same doctrine. Everybody, everybody's included. And the white man's always where in this chain? At the, at the And where's the black and Latino? At the bottom. Always on the bottom. Nobody sees the same thing, <laughs> the same pattern. Okay, what are you going to say, outside? Hey, I was reading a post. Captain Yashua just sent the, uh, he said, he's being slick. He's saying Abraham, but not Isaac and Jacob. Now, the reason why he's doing that, the reason why this mess is going up is because people say that Abraham was the father of many nations. But just like you pointed out before, a lot of people don't recognize that all of the people on the earth didn't come out of Abraham. So they're still off. But give me Romans 9. You know, that's always the dagger. That's the rusty knife in the side. Give me, <laughs> give me Romans 9. Romans 9. Verse 7. Nope. Which one you The want? part about the, uh, yeah, 7, I think it's like 8 and 9. Let me get it. Read. Read 7. Come Romans on. chapter 9, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. No, nope. go ahead. Keep reading. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. That's crystal clear. Keep reading. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Read. For this is the world, the word of promise. <laughs> this is the word of promise. This is where I wanted to get to. This is the word of promise. Come on. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not Who only was Sarah? That was Abraham's wife, right? 
according to him, that's where the cup, this, he would stop there. But keep reading. And not only this. Why did the Most High say, but not only this? Meaning that I'm going beyond Abraham. That's the reason why I'm having this read. Because I'm going beyond Abraham. But not only Abraham. Go ahead. But when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born. The Most High just broke it down. So he ain't talking about all of Isaac's children. He just killed it right there. So what the hell is this dude talking about? He knows what, he knows what he's lying about. His, his masters really taught him how to deal. But it ain't working. It ain't working. Exactly. Uh, give me a... Uh, no, let's finish this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do not allow the pain of your past to pervert your theology. Stop! Do not let the pain of your past pervert your theology. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28. What are you talking about, Brother Jakes? Let's see if the pain of our past is biblically recorded. Deuteronomy 28, 48, please. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. That's the pain of our past, slavery. Now verse 68, please. The pain of our past. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. This is the slave trade. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there, once you got off those ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Meaning, and no man shall save us, redeem us. So this is the pain of our past. Give me Leviticus 26, 17. The pain of our past. Listen, Brother T.D., I'll pray that you see this and listen good. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall rule over you. Where are we living? This verse right here. We're still there. Our enemies, those that hate us, rule us. Now let's see if that perverts our theology. Luke now. Luke chapter 1, verse 68 to 71. Let's see if it perverts anything. Go ahead. Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Start at 68. 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and, he, and hath raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. See, Christianity has perverted that. Christianity says Jesus is coming for everybody. No, he's coming to save the Israelites from their enemies and from all that hate us. That links up perfectly what exactly. Moses said in Leviticus. So the pain of our past is the pain of our present day misery. Everybody understand that thing? Exactly. Now, now dig this in. He says for us to forget about it, right? He said don't let the, the pain of the past affect you today. Give me Deuteronomy 32 and 7, please. <laughs> Let's see what the Most High said about our past. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. <laughs> Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. That's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys spent a lot of money going to theology school, learning Bible texts from the people who hate them, the people who despised them, the people that oppressed them, the people who destroyed their forefathers and foremothers, and they learned in the Bible from them. Let's play on. You know you can stay on this clip all day. Go ahead. And he sways. Stop. Is all that sweat on his back? If what the hell is all that? Mutual of Omaha, and I got a contract with Mutual of Omaha. They don't care whether you're white and I'm black. It's do you have a contract? God is a God of covenant. Covenant is a contract. If you have a contract, it ain't a white contract. It ain't a black contract. It ain't a Latino contract. It's a contract. See that? Yeah. See the editor? Hey. You mad. You mad. 
<laughs> well, I didn't know that was coming up. Hey, listen, listen. Bishop asked about the sweat, right? These churches are so wicked in how they do. They probably stay, they probably prop them up to look like he's sweating. They probably put water on them. I would not, I don't put nothing past these people because they'll do stage things like that to make you think that he's really out there working and sweating for the Lord. Exactly. And if you notice, he wasn't reading no scripture. Right. See, I want y'all to study that Romans 11, because I think he did pull something out of Romans 11. And he don't know Romans 11. The wild olive tree. What are you going to say, Malachi? Yeah, what you brothers got to understand that's going on. What's going on is that the job that we are doing, it start affecting these lines, these lies that have been put out throughout the four corners of the earth. All right? So what's going on, a lot of people is leaving T.D. Jake's church. That's why in the beginning he said, some of you all are shaken by telling the people, don't don't let your theology be built on what the pain that you went through in the past. You understand? Because when we're on the street, we bring out that truth and what happened to our people in the past and what happened to our people today. You understand? We make the Bible become real in the minds of our people. And that's what's killing T.D. Jakes, Criflo Dollar, and all these lying pastors that follow in Christianity. So the war, the war, it already began, man. Because as the bishop mentioned earlier on, they had a council, a secret council, how to fight the Israelites. How to, how to battle us in the scriptures, how to discredit us. So he already, so he already started making his move to try to discredit us. But the Bible says that the most High going to give us a mouth where nobody could gain saying nothing that, that any of you brothers saying once you are coming out of this Bible. That's right. Once you are rolling in the spirit of Christ. None of these pastors, no Edomite, nobody could gain, gain say nothing that you are, that's coming out of your mouth. Exactly. You understand? Once you are coming through the spirit of Christ. That's right. So this is warfare, brothers. And it's, and it's going to go to another level soon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on that later. Give me Isaiah 30 and uh, 12. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel. Of who? Of Israel. Does it say of all nations? Of Israel. Go ahead. Because ye despise this word and trust in oppression. Our people trust in this white man. The same man who has been oppressing us for centuries. We trust in him. We trust in democracy. We trust in Christianity. Those were two oppressive systems. Do you realize they did not let the slaves into their religions for a long time. And then when they did allow us in there, I know amongst the blacks, they had to, we had to be monitored. And the Latinos, had to, the Indians had to sit in the back, on the floor. They got films that show the American Indians, the Mexicans, the Puerto Ricans, sitting on the floor in the back of the church. You can see that movie, uh, End of Poverty. They show you that in there. Now you trust in this oppressive system. Read. And perverseness. And perverseness. What's the perverseness? They say, come as you are, stay as you be. The laws of God are done away with. You can be an adulterer. It's okay with Jesus. You can be same-sex marriage. It's okay with Jesus. That's perverseness. Go ahead. And stay thereon. And you want to stay in that. Go ahead. Therefore, this iniquity. This iniquity, this sin. Shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall. All these religions are falling down. All these oppressive systems are coming down. Down. Go ahead. Swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. It's be at an instant. What are you going to see outside? Exactly. And that's what the scriptures say. It said our job is to pull down all these strongholds. These are the things that got our people captivated in these lies in Christianity. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4 says, For whatever things which were written aforetime were written for our learning. Again, it's telling us to reference the past. It's telling us to go back and get the information from the past. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So you can't discard that. You can't throw that away. You can't say forget it. You can't say don't read it. The Bible is telling you that it's there for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures, where that's what we've been talking about. The past is on scripture. The things that he's telling us to deny is scripture. 
The Most High is telling us to get those scriptures for our hope and comfort. And that's in the New Testament where it's saying this. Exactly. Good point. Now, watch it. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 9. They, and in Christianity, they love talking about, A, Christopher Columbus being a patriarch of Christ, bringing Christianity to the pagan Indians, the savage Indians. That's what they say. Then they glorify the founding fathers of America. Here's an America where you have freedom of religion. Well, really. And you know what? We have to, we have, the Lord has allowed the Israelites, as we rise up, to use that consti constitutional point, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, to speak the word of the Most High God. Because before, prior to that, what would have happened? They would have put us to death for speaking this word. Now watch this. So with that alleged constitution, our people are afforded no excuses. Watch this. Read that. So you want second Ezra 9 and 11. And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty. While they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance. And when as yet they had place of repentance. Was open unto them. Which is now. Go ahead. Understood not. There's a remnant of our people who's still not going to understand. We've been given liberty into, in this system. To teach the word of the Most High. And guess what? It says they would understand not. Go ahead. But despised it. Our, a remnant of our people despised the laws of God. Go ahead. The same must know it after death by pain. Do you hear the judgment on that thing? Oh, you reject God's laws now. But you're going to learn after death by pain. See, you think when your body goes, that's it. Oh, that ain't it. The party ain't over. You think, I, I committed suicide. I have escaped the wrath of God. Then you open your eyes. You see that big black guy with big black feet sitting on the throne. You ain't escaped nothing. <laughs> Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Yeah, you know, Bishop, the scripture just went out. Really, the Lord has given us the platform to plead our cause. This is what they had done to us, Lord. We need justice. So we, the Lord given us a perfect platform to win our case to him. This is what we have done. We have repent. What you going to do for us now, Lord? Then the Father will fight our kids to his son, Jesus Christ. Trust me. That's why I said time and chance comes to every man. Yep. Exactly. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want verse 21, then we'll jump down. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, you had a class earlier where you was telling the young men, we're not going to win this thing by guns and knives. This is not a physical fight, brother. We can't save the people by physicality, guns, knives, even marching. The key, read the bottom part of that verse. By the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. See, that, that's how our people are going to be saved. By the foolishness of preaching. That's the power God said. He says, you just do that. Just preach. And the word preach means what, brothers? Prophesy. That's what it means. Prophesy. Pre teach. Teach before it comes to pass. So that's what we're doing. Because you get brothers that say, all you Israelites is about talk. You're right. That's all we are about. Preaching. That's our job. To tell you what's going to happen. Okay? And it's happening. So don't get mad. Because we ain't going. Why don't you take over this? Take we ain't taking over nothing. All we're going to do is preach. That's going to save the people. Jump down to verse 26. For ye see your calling. Because in preaching, our people are meant to do what? Change their lives. Make themselves ready, men and women, for the second coming of the Lord. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So if you was a homosexual, you better change that lifestyle and repent. If you was a lesbian or a whore, you better change that lifestyle and repent and make yourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. If you was a drug dealer, thief, a murderer, you better change that lifestyle and make yourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. That's what the Bible say. That's what preaching does. Verse 26, please. For ye see your calling, brethren. I hope you men see your calling. Your calling is not guns and knives. Your calling is preaching the gospel. Read it again. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So many of these brothers that are, are seemingly wise, seemingly mighty, and seemingly noble are called into this truth. 
I want you because we're probably gonna be. I wonder if uh, Denzel's gonna repent. Mm-mm, don't worry about that. I wonder if TD gonna repent. Don't worry about that either. The Mosai is calling who he wants to call in. Okay. Now watch this. Let's talk about brief. Why? Can I say something real quick? Yes. You know, uh, I was talking to Deacon Laba and Deacon Malakai yesterday about uh, what happened in Memphis, Tennessee. A lot, of, a lot of brothers don't understand what just happened. You see, also been in the truth for a while. We, when we, when we used to come to Bishop uh, House in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Brooklyn, I, I know Deacon Yamsa went there the other day. <laughs> uh, from where we was to what just happened, a lot of you don't understand. When you're reading the scripture Bishop just read, a lot of you, you have that low self-esteem. You don't think you're worth anything. But most I got just showing you, if you stand, this was going to happen. Now, this was only what? They say 800. That's what they say. And everybody's panicking. Now, I want you to think about this. It's it's supposed to be one third. One third is not 800 people. Because a lot of us focus on 144,000, 144,000. It's a one third. Talk about a million of people. If that one third. Think about it. If that one third we paint, the economy of the United States we're gonna is gonna get hit. Who do you think they're gonna come after? I just want you guys to think. You guys don't see what just happened. Most I got just giving you a taste what's about to happen. Exactly. That's so what like, you just get. Right. So TD TD Jakes is mad because his money's getting hit. Yeah. Deacon Malachi exactly. is saying if one when, when, not if when one third of Israel repents. That means women ain't going to be spending millions of dollars on Gloria Vanderbilt jeans, uh, animal hair, yep. Asian nails. They're going to stop doing that stuff. Pork, swan, take me to Red Lobster. They're going to stop that. Then the American economy get hit. Yeah. So it ain't going to go beyond T.D. Jakes getting mad. Your president's going to get mad. Yeah. Your mayor's going to get mad. Hey. The part was about many of our people selling drugs. A lot of money is being made on the back end of that industry, right. of that criminal industry. Some of us used to sell drugs no more, no more. That vibe get out here. That means a whole the court system's gonna get messed up. The jail systems, a whole lot of systems are gonna go out of whack. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.